In the discussion, you, you, you mentioned that Margaret Hodge's tombstone should have her biggest achievement on it, um, making large companies responsible for their supply chains. Can you just explain exactly how they are accountable for that? <laughs> well, what the Companies Act did achieve, credit to the Labour government, but credit to the core campaign that helped the Labour government achieve it, is the idea that companies must actually report on their social and environmental aspects uh, as well as on their financial accounting. It's not quite an equivalent. People talk about the triple bottom line and that there should be equal weight given. That wasn't yet achieved. But a significant step was came forward. And what Margaret herself did right at the end game of that very long and difficult debate was to concede the point that companies didn't simply have to report on their own direct activities, but indirectly on the activities of their business partners and subcontractors working for them. Now, abuses so often are down the supply chain at local level, whether it's in Britain, Europe, or whether it's in the rest of the world. And so the companies in Britain and in Europe say, oh, our hands are clean. We didn't even know about it. Well, that can't be true. They have contractual requirements in terms of price and quality of product that they manage all the way down their supply chain. What we argue is that if they can do that or for the competitiveness uh, of their companies, they can do it for the environment and society too, and the Companies Act brought that principle home. At the moment, the chocolate companies who produce the bars that we all know and love, high street names, uh, they often have voluntary codes and they say that they're not going to have uh, any bad labour practices in their supply chains, child slaves, which have been proven to be in the supply chains of cocoa farming in West Africa. But of course when an investigative journalist or a campaigning NGO uncovers the truth, then what the company says, oh we didn't know about it, we're very sorry and we didn't mean to anyway and it wasn't our fault. What the legislation moves us towards is a situation where the company is being required to know can't then hide behind the excuse of ignorance and that there is greater political weight and priority within the company to find out the answers to those questions. I'm sure we'll still get denials and I'm sure we'll still get abuses but it is tightening the, the, the noose on the abuses and it is definitely a step in the right direction. Okay. In terms of you, your role in, in Brussels, can you give us a flavour as to the way these negotiations happen? So, um, do all countries try and. Um, they, they, does everybody pass the book, if you like? So, would Germany say, oh, well, you know, we're doing more than England, so we don't need to do any more on this? Or is everybody moving together? <coughs> in European politics, generally, you always have champions on particular policies obstructionists and then perhaps people in the middle who will just see the way the debate is going. And what's interesting on corporate responsibility and ca accountability, it hasn't always been governments of the left, it's sometimes been governments of left and right that have been champions, the Swedes, the Dutch, the, the, the Labour Party is out of power uh, now and only a junior coalition partner, but where there have been real attempts to take this issue forward at the European level. Uh, and I don't hide the fact that I've been working here in Britain to try and make Britain a greater champion of our policies for corporate responsibility, where the government has seen the opportunity and the need to play at home to the, on the interests of ethical business, uh, but has not yet done so as a progressive champion in the debates at the European level. I'm part of trying to change that and make it happen. In terms of your constituency, you represent the east of England, which is very rural in its nature, mm. uh, a lot of farmers. Um, what's, what do they feel about the, uh, the, the campaign that you've got? Um, I, I guess that they've got a vested interest in ensuring that um, agricultural uh, interests overseas are not using slave labour and that sort of thing. Do they see how it directly impacts upon them in the UK? Well, Labour behind the label, which is the British part of the Clean Clothes campaign, the massive international campaign which is trying to clean up the, uh, the, the sweatshops in Asia and in other parts of the world where children and women workers are abused. That's based in Norwich. Uh, Banana Link also ba based in Nor Norfolk which is trying to uh, campaign worldwide on the abuses on banana plantations where pesticides and chemicals that are illegal and harmful to health uh, uh, banned here in, in Europe are being used by European companies in Latin America uh, and elsewhere. And of course in East Anglia where you know my predecessors, trade unionists and labour movement people 
in the last century campaigned against rural poverty and the abuse of agricultural workers in our fields. It's still true today in terms of the gangmasters debate. But the truth is that that tradition of campaigning for peasant farmers, for people who uh, l- earn their li- livelihoods from the land and who deserve more than anything uh, to see their livelihoods sustained and their rights respected, though that campaign in the 21st century is in the fields in Asia and in Africa where our companies are sourcing the goods and we have a responsibility to end the abuses. And just one final thing, um, it, it, you talk about what we can, you know, what we can achieve if we act together. Um, is there a danger that if, you act, if we act on a European basis, large multinationals just base themselves elsewhere in the world and it's difficult to keep chasing them around with ever more regulations? It is one of the arguments used against having European-only regulation. And I'm the first to say that the work that I've done now, piloting three different European Parliament resolutions, calling for corporate accountability, is only a staging post. We can do more in Europe, but only as a platform to getting global rules on corporate accountability. But on arms sales, the code of conduct on arms sales, stopping arms being traded to dictators and to those who would... Uh, abuse human rights in the world, Europe decided to take a stand and to provide an example to the rest of the world. We're now taking that out from Brussels into New York in the campaign and we're making progress for an international arms trade treaty and my work involves trying to get European rules on corporate accountability and responsibility but as a similar staging post to getting that binding international convention on corporate accountability that we've waited for for 30 years. And at this moment in history, we are closer than ever to achieving it.